Soon I will have a new apprentice, one much younger and far more powerful. Hey guys, if you want a cool sticker, go to newsletter.battleshipcobra.com. Sign up for my email newsletter. I'm going to do announcements for new stuff coming up with my channel, new content, stuff that I'm doing. And I'll also do video announcements there. So you can just get all the information uh, about me and about my projects. I will not abuse my email powers. I will not go to the dark side with my emails. Um, you can also check out battleshipcobra.com for all my other stuff. I will do a draw on March 1st, 2023, and I will reach out to contact people and then I will send them these stickers. I can sign them, I can kiss them, I can, you can do whatever. Um, you can stick them to your laptops, they're very cool. That's it. Today I'm going to cover a little problem where people want to import information into UDTs, but you can't. So this is the method to do it that I use anyways. Um, you will have to register the UDT as a UDO, and I'll show you how to create your user-defined table as an object, and then how to create your template, and then actually how to import information into that template. Here we go. Okay, so most of you who have asked me this question obviously would understand how to do a UDT. So let's make a UDT first. Tools, use defined tables. Remember you can't do this while people are in the system or you have to kick everybody out or you have to do this after hours. But you need to store some data of table, like some data in a table. Um, you go to user defined tables. I'm just gonna make a new one called example and we'll just call it video example. The difference here is you need to set an object type of master data. You can't just leave it blank. We're gonna, we're gonna actually do this so that we can import a lot of data in here. So you can turn this into a real object and you can actually uh, generate the templates in the DTW and you can import them. Okay, and we're going to add it here, update do its thing, boom. So the table is in there, but it is kind of sort of at this point of an invisible table because it's a master data type. It's waiting to be turned into an object. So now that we have that UDT created, we're gonna add one UDF just to give you a good example because most people will be adding a UDF. You add the user defined field, the user defined field, the same way as you add a normal user defined field and we go here, user tables, uh, video example, add. We're just gonna add the field as number, some number, whatever you wanna store it as, as number, and that's it. It's all, you can add as many as you want. Now that you have your UDF with your UDT on it, we are going to register it as a real object. Tools, customization tools, objects, all this stuff you have to do with nobody in the system. Just keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise you're gonna be kicking everybody out. Add new object. I'm just gonna call this example. Um, you, you can't put a space in here. I don't know if it's a bug that's been fixed, um, but every time I go to do this and do the importing, if you put a space in here like that, it will just fail and it won't say, hey, Mike, it failed because there's a space in the name. It'll just give you some random error message and it just will make you really mad for no reason. So just leave no space in there. We can change this later and I'll kind of, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but um, I'll show you. So you go type master data because we set the UDT as a master data type. Table name, example, next. Uh, settings, I don't usually mess with this too much. Delete, add, update, those usually are fine. I, You can experiment more with these, I'm not going to. Default form, I do it as a matrix style, which is just like a spreadsheet looking thing. Menu, because we wanna actually put it into the menu structure. Um, just It just makes it easier and it's actually pretty nice for users to be able to edit it that way. And um, so I'll just do video example. Doesn't have to, it can have a space here for whatever reason, this doesn't make a difference. Um, parent item ID, I'm just gonna put it in here, setup, general. 
and I'm gonna place it at the bottom, click next. Um, I'm gonna do the name, so these are the columns we want. So name, code name, you can change the name and install, you can change the names and stuff. I'm gonna add code, name, and then I'll add my sum number UDF. And then that's it, finish. It's gonna register it again. Don't do this while people are on, it will kick them off. You need to do it outside of your normal business hours or kick everybody off or you're doing it in pre-production. And uh, make sure you back up your database before you do this. Modules, administration, setup, general, video example, boom. So we have a simple thing. You can see that this, there's no space here, but again, you have to just kind of do it that way for now. You can change it later. Okay, so we're gonna run this. We're gonna run here, more, run as administration. That's your DTW, run as administration. Um, I have the new one that's like brand spanking new uh, V10. So it's a little bit different here. Not private, just continue. It's just more like a web login. Uh, so I'm gonna log into this one. I'm gonna just use manager and my super secret password, log in. So once you have created that and you're logged in, make sure you run uh, the DTW as administrator templates, generate UDO templates. Now you want UDO, you wanna clear it all and find your specific one. So here's mine, UDO example, generate the template, template, template. Templates were generated successfully. You could see C programs, blah, 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 blah. You can go right here. I already have this open, templates. User defined data. It's in your templates ready, UDO, demo template, UDO example, and example. So we're gonna open this one. I actually have it on the desktop already. So I opened that up. And then, so you'll see, I put this information in, it'll just be here with no uh, information. I just added a little bit of information already uh, just to make it easy. So the code, it's the way that I've set up, it's not auto incrementing and you have to manage the codes yourself. So I just made it as 2023, whatever. You can make these as whatever you want. The name doesn't need to be unique. You're gonna see that you have a string of length 50, length 100, and then you're gonna see that it's a decimal basically. So I'm just gonna set any sort of information here. So you could do this with thousands of records or whatever you wanna store in that information, in that uh, UDT. And um, you'll be able to use it, this, the UDT exactly the same way, even though it's registered as a UDO. This is just the only way to import. So once you've set this up, you're gonna wanna go to, you've imported all your data, everything you wanna do, your, your data types match, it's all good. File, save as, this PC. Tab delimited, example, example. Save. So you could see at the top here, it says example, example.text. If you've ever seen me working with the DTW, you know now that you have to close Excel. You do not wanna leave it open right now. Just close it because even if you do any sort of changes, um, you will not, it will not be saved. Um, you think you're gonna be changing it, but you're actually only check, changing the text file. And once you've made your Excel file, done that, then save it as tab delimited, close it. And then if you need to make more changes, reopen the original Excel, resave it, re-import it, but close it. Make, you know what I mean? So I always have it closed because I've saved it from the Excel as a text file, fully kept editing, done a ton more work in the Excel. I thought it was the XLSX file and it was just the tab delimited file and it's all gone. It was all gone. When I close it, it's all gone. Um, so it will continue to look like that XLSX file, but it's not. Once you've saved it as a tab delimited, it's gone. Like, it's not gone, it's just the tab only. Um, so remember, save it as a tab, close it, okay? Boom, now I wanna go cancel this, this is all done. We're gonna just do a regular import now. Import, master data, because it's a master data type, next. Add new data, next. Scroll down. User defined data, UDOs. Example, next. My file, example, boom, next. See how it's mapped properly because it was generated out of the UD, uh, out of the DTW. You can see the source data tab, tab data, everything. Run the simulation. You're doing all your same normal stuff. Boom, you can do this in update mode too. Next, 
Boom, import. Perfect, that's what you wanna see, very straightforward. Modules, administration, setup, general, video example. And now your table has been populated with all of your stuff. You know, it's it's kind of a big workaround. It's not that much more work per se, uh, especially if there's, this is the only option you have to properly put information into a UDO. Um, I'll show you how to change the name here again. So I'll go cancel, tools, customization, object registration, next, update an existing one. Scroll around here, I have a lot of objects from Boyum. Example, next. Uh, put a space there, finish, boom. So again, does anybody really care about that so much? Maybe, maybe not, especially if it's like something that you're only using periodically. Um, the other thing is if you wanna clear this or you know update it with SQL, like me personally, I don't have a real problem just being able to clear that out or just use a delete. Um, you can just use a store procedure and delete them. Um, if you need to clear out rows, I don't really see that as being a huge issue. But in order to add data, unless you're going to do the add data through some sort of CSV manipulation in SQL or HANA, um, this is the easiest way for a regular consultant to do that. So you can always come in here, remove specific rows that you need, edit the specific rows that you need on the user interface side. Uh, but to get the bulk of the information in, you can just use that DGW process I just showed you. Thank you guys very much. Remember, if you want one of these cool stickers, go to newsletter.battleshipcover.com and sign up. I'm gonna do my email notification for new videos, new projects, new stuff I'm working on. I'm gonna be doing some stuff outside of YouTube. I'm planning on it anyway. So uh, I'm gonna draw March 1st, 2023 in order to get one of these four stickers and then I will send it at my expense to you wherever you are in the world. So hopefully it's not that expensive where it's going, but it's just a letter. Hopefully they don't bend it in half. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Check out battlestreetcobra.com, my website for all sorts of other stuff. Thank you so much, see you later. Make some progress, I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me, maybe